Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. This is May the 9th in the year 2014. And we've been having terrible storms here again as they go through the, the, mid, the middle of the United States again. We're just hoping there are no more tornadoes because you've probably heard about the ones that we had just in our vicinity that wiped out two small towns. So Mother Nature has really been kicking up a bad winter and now all this turbulence as we go into spring. But um, it's just me tonight. Julia is still in, um, in London. And she's over there with our England office. And she'll be over there to be back live with her next week. She'll be back in the United States. When I came back a week or so ago, she had to stay over there and take care of some business. So she'll be back next week. I just happened to think I didn't bring the 800 toll-free number. But I guess uh, Don knows it. I don't know if he's on there or not. He's the producer. If he can tell it to you, or if not, if anybody wants to call in, they can just get through there. But I didn't bring the number with me. I'm in another office. I guess he's not there. Otherwise, he would be hearing me talking about it. <laughs> All right. But if anybody wants to call in, uh, I'm open to questions tonight. Maybe it's on the website. I just don't have it in front of me, the toll-free number to call in and ask questions. <laughs> All right. Well, well I, can, I, I can help what? you there, the toll-free number. Yeah, can you give out the toll-free number because I didn't bring it with me. Certainly, certainly. If people want to call into the station on Station 1 and they want to tune in, actually, they could call 716-748-0150. But uh, if they're trying to listen in, they actually got to dial a different number. Uh, let me go grab that. I'll be right back. Okay. I didn't know if he was All there right. or not. We'll just have him call toll free anywhere in the U.S. and Canada, 888-627-6008. Again, that's toll free anywhere in the U.S. and Canada, 888-627-6008. Or you can call one of the direct lines. You'll see them if you go to bbsradio.com, station one. And back Good, to you, Dolores. I usually have all that with me, but I'm in a different office, so I forgot to bring it. Okay. But anyway, it's just me tonight. So uh, the, if you want to call in, it's okay. The last two weeks, I've been talking about dimensions. And there's, I have so many fascinating stories of how we've been exploring dimensions. And tonight, I'm going to go back into what I was talking about last week, about how the dimensions, how the uh, UFOs and ETs use the dimensions to travel, and some of the strange things I've ha had happen in my cases with that. So I'm just going to talk about some of these cases that have been very strange, and we'll just see where it goes from there. I guess because of having the UFO conference um, in uh, April, it's still a residue of it hanging over me, and I've got all these other things like that I've been writing about for years. But, you know, in my 27 years of investigating the UFOs and ETs, I found the answers to just about anything anybody would want to know about it, because um, I've had access directly with the ETs, and so they tell me anything I want to know. But one thing is that people are always talking about missing time. Now, I've had some very fascinating cases of missing time, but to me, it's even more fascinating when you go into condensed time. You don't ever hear much about that. But before we get into condensed time, let me give you an example of a fascinating case that I had, and it's reported in one of my books. My book, The Custodians, is the one that is my 25 years at that time of working with ETs, and all the information I got as I went along with the different people and cases coming in. So this case is reported in that book. But it was a woman that came to see me, and she had gone to Hawaii, 
uh, on a vacation. But she was also combining vacation with business because she was there for a conference. Well, the one night she said she had a rental car and she wanted to go down to this hotel that she'd heard about on the beach. She wanted to go down there and eat at the restaurant, and then she could look out over the beach. So she uh, drove the car down there looking for this hotel. And she it was still daylight out. So she missed the entrance to the hotel to go in to go up to it. And so she kept driving a little further on this road, trying to find a way to turn around to get back to the hotel. And she saw... A, a trailer park, you know, a mobile home park, and she thought, well, I'll pull in there and turn around. It was very beautiful, very well kept, a lot of nice palm trees and beautiful flowers in among the different mobile homes. So she turned in there so she could turn around and go back to the hotel. And she says, as she was turning around in there, there was suddenly a big bright light came out of the sky, rather like a spotlight, and it shone on her car and all of the uh, surroundings around it. And that was the last thing she remembered until the next instant, it was dark, and she was on the other side of the island, because this was in Honolulu. She was on the other side of the island, driving down this big major highway, going in the opposite direction from where she had been before. And she suddenly told where she was, and she said, oh, my gosh, it was dark then. Several hours had gone by, and she couldn't figure out how did she get there. And here she's driving in the middle of the traffic. You would have thought she would have had an accident. And she said later, before she left Honolulu, she went back down that road again, past the same hotel, to see if she could find that trailer park. And although she returned to that spot several times, she never was able to find that trailer park again. So she wanted to have as part of her session, what happened that night? What was that all about? What really went on? So I took her back to that that night and the events that were happening when she's driving down the road, and she pulled... She's reliving the whole thing under hypnosis. And she pulled into the trailer park. And when she, the light came down, then we could see what it was, and it was a UFO. And it took her. But during the course of the session, I was having a conversation with the ETs, and I wanted to know what happened. Why couldn't she find it again whenever she went back? And they said, oh, because it didn't exist. We created it just for her. We wanted to have a conversation with her. We wanted to meet with her because they've been doing this all her life. I found this time and time again with my, my clients also. And they said, we wanted to create a place that was beautiful that she would think was safe, that she could pull into and turn around, where she would be out of sight of the road, and then we could take her on board and do what we had to do. So it didn't really exist. That's why she couldn't find it whenever she went back to look for it. They had created it especially for her. Then when they brought her back, they put her down on the highway on the other side of the island. But apparently they made sure she was safe, even though it was strange. All of a sudden you're in the middle of traffic. So to me, I think that's fascinating that they can not only manipulate time, because we have many cases of this missing time, but they can also manipulate space. They can create any kind of an effect that they want to create just for the person, for certain people. And for them to see, and it's always a very personal experience. I've had many cases where people said they were driving down a freeway, six-lane freeway, 
and a huge UFO so big it would cover all the lanes is up in the sky hovering over the freeway. And she said, you would think that people would be putting on their brakes, they'd be crashing and all kinds of things with this thing hovering right above the freeway. But everybody is driving and going about their business. They don't see anything. <clears throat> the person in that case pulled off the highway and sat there because she wanted to watch it. And she said it was so fascinating that nobody else seemed to see it. They just kept going about their business. So I've had this happen in many cases, even when people are in the same vehicle. Some people will see something and some people won't. And in a case like this, whenever the other cars don't see anything, it's an individual experience just for that person alone, just for them, so nobody else is going to see it. It's a very personal experience. So it's, it's very strange how they can manipulate time and space. But let's go to condensed time. To me, I think that's much more fascinating than missing time. <clears throat> I've had many, many cases of this, and I'm still exploring it to figure out what is going on there. This is where things happen in a shorter amount of time than they should have happened. When the person is going somewhere and it's supposed to take hours to get there, and they get there like in 15 minutes. And I said, that's the only way to travel, I think. Why bother uh, driving all that way when you can just get there instantly? Kind of like beam me up, Scotty. And when I'm on those planes, that's what I wish we could do, just suddenly disappear here and reappear over there. But I've had many cases of condensed time, and there's a weird thing that happens during that when the time is condensed and things happen in a short period of time. It's a sensation that the people call twilight zone, dead sound, dead zone, because it's as though everything has stopped. This is why I'm thinking it may have something to do with dimension. Everything has stopped. Everything comes to a, a still. And there's no sound when they're in this condensed time thing that takes place. It's um, That's why I call it Twilight Zone and dead sound. Um, one case I had, the woman was leaving Little Rock late at night. It was midnight. <laughs> Zalivan, Arkansas here. And she was going home, and she knew it always took an hour for her to drive on the big six-lane freeway to get to her uh, road that would turn off to take her up to her house. Well, she was driving down the freeway, and she said all of a sudden it was so strange because on a six-lane highway there was no other traffic, just her. And it was like everything was still. There was no sound anywhere. This is what makes it seem strange, weird, because there are no sounds. And she drove along, you know, not knowing what was going on, and she turned off on her road to go up to where she lived to get to her house out in the country. And when she did, she saw this huge, bright oblong of light hovering over the trees to her right. And... As she was driving, it seemed to be following her. It didn't have a definite shape. It was just like a big light. And it was following her as she went up the road. And she kept staring at that and driving, too. And when they're doing this, there are no night noises. There's nothing. It's just dead zone, dead quiet. And about halfway up the road, she saw what could be interpreted as the only sign of life, if you want to call it that. She saw a cat in the middle of the road. Now, the cat, she pulled up next to it to look at it. The cat was sitting on his haunches, 
with its paws in the air, staring at this big light that was over the tree. And she said it was the weirdest uh, uh, to look at it. It almost looked like it was frozen in the middle of jumping because it was totally not moving at all. It was just like a frozen statue of a cat staring at this UFO as though it was caught in mid-jump. Now, when I tried to think about what that was going on there, to me, it's as though you're talking about dimensions, almost as though she was sliding from one dimension to another dimension. And the cat was in one dimension and she was in another. So the it was more or less frozen in time right there in the middle of the jump. That's the only thing I can figure out there, and that's why I keep thinking it has something to do with dimension. So as she drove further, she came close to her house, and when she got closer, the light that was over the trees suddenly switched off, but it was like a giant eye coming shut, like two lids of an eye, coming shut, and the light blinked out. Then she got to her house. She looked at the clock, and she found out it had only been 15 minutes since she had left Little Rock, where normally it would have taken her an hour. And she got the clock. She woke her husband up. She said, I want you to see what time it is. She couldn't figure out what happened. Now, I've had many, many of these kind of cases where... Things like that have happened, and it's always the feeling of dead zone. There's no sound, no noises, as though they're sliding in and out of dimensions where something is existing in one but not in the other. Another case I want to bring up like this, and all of this is in the book, The Custodians. Another woman was driving on this same highway, And she was going to Fort Smith, which is a lot further down the highway than a little rock. And everything was fine until she pulled off of the highway to go into the city of Fort Smith. Then she saw a light, a UFO, and it was following her as she pulled off into the city. And this is when everything began to get strange. As she's driving down the street, There's no lights in the houses. There's no sounds. There's no night noises. There's no people. There are no traffic. It's just like everything is gone. And as she's driving down the street, the street lights on the street are going out in front of her as she approaches them. One after the other, they're blinking out. And this by now was beginning to really freak her out. She said, what's going on here? Where's everybody gone? And the lights were blinking out. Finally, out of desperation, she wanted to find people. She drove into a mall. And in the mall was toward the, uh, where she came in was an all-night restaurant. She said, I'll pull in there. There should be people there. And when she pulled up to the restaurant, there were lots of cars parked out in the parking lot. But there were no lights and there were no people. There were no people in the whole parking lot anywhere that she could see. So now she was really shook up. So she got back into her car and drove on home as fast as she could with this light following her. And she finally gets to her house. She pulls in the driveway, and when she pulled in the driveway, the bright light suddenly sped off real fast. And when that happened, all of the sound came crashing in, and the noise was, uh, you know, overwhelming because there was no sound at all before, and now all of a sudden she's hearing people, cars, and the night noises. It just suddenly came crashing in on her. She was back to normal again. So during that session, I wanted to find out what was happening. And they said, 
as she was driving down the street, she was actually going faster than the dimensions around her. This, this explains having the time be condensed. Time was speeding up. She was driving faster than anything around her. And they said to anybody, everybody else was continuing on their life the, the normal way. And to everybody else, they would not have seen her. She would have been totally invisible because she was moving at a different rate and speed than they were. So it's like she was sliding in and out of dimensions also. But she would have been totally invisible to anybody else. Uh, I've had some scientists try to explain why the lights were going out, but it could be something to do with this. Um, <laughs> she was going faster than anything else. But I asked them what it was all about, and they said, we have to stop your world for a fraction of a second. We have to catch you off guard. I said, what do you mean? We aren't on guard. And they said, oh, yes, you are. You're on, on guard more than you think you are. So in order to get your attention, we have to stop your world just for a fraction of a second. And that's why they do it by allowing people to see the UFO, to see the light in the sky. Just enough time to catch you off guard. And I said, well, what's the purpose of catching you off guard? He said, then the information can be downloaded into the mind on a cellular level. And I said, boy, I didn't understand what they were talking about. Now I understand a lot more. This is in the beginning of my work. But I said, what do you mean? They said, it's information you're going to need in the coming times. And now I know they mean because of the shift and the way things are happening and time is definitely speeded up. All the things that are happening to the world, they said it's information the human race is going to need and it has is downloaded into the human brain on a cellular level. Then at the time it's needed, it'll be there. And the person won't even know where it came from. They'll just suddenly have the information, know what to do, without even realizing where it came from. So to me, and I have a lot of people saying that, they hit symbols, they see symbols in them. Um, all these things. And I said, it's just information being downloaded. Don't worry about it. But to me, that means every time you may see a UFO, see a light in the sky, it doesn't mean you've been abducted. It doesn't mean you're having an interaction with ETs on that level. It just means they were trying to get your attention just long enough to download information into your brain. So don't expect if you go to have a session with someone that because you saw a UFO, you're going to also have an experience. It doesn't work that way. So to me, these are fascinating aspects of dimensions and how these things are working. they not only controlling time and space, but they can create anything they want for you to see. But they've told me many times nothing is real anyway. Everything is an illusion. They said everything is a hologram, which makes you think of Star Trek in the holodeck. So it makes you wonder how much is real. But even when the person sees an ET, often they will disguise themselves and present themselves to the person in a shape or something they can identify with, and it's not frightening. That's why so many people report seeing owls on even deer in the woods that's communicating with them. They will appear to the human being in a form that's identifiable to them, a form that they can accept that's not frightening. 
And it would take too long to go through all of the many, many cases I've had of things like that. But this is part of what I do in my lectures on UFOs is because people have the wrong ideas about what is really happening. There's a whole lot more out there going on than people realize. So what one person reports, another person may see something totally different, have a totally different experience. It's all individual to that person. You never know what's really, what, you can't say one is wrong and one is not. It's just their way of perceiving the event that's happening to them. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get a drink here. Okay. Um, but I was talking uh, last week about how the ETs use the different dimensions to travel back and forth. And I got started into it, and I never really got finished with it. <clears throat> and if anybody has any questions about what I'm talking about, you can call in also, even though this takes up a lot of time at a lecture. Everybody wants to have more information. Okay. Now, I said last week that the UFOs travel by using vibrations and frequencies. And the huge motherships, they're outside of our atmosphere. You will never see them. And they're cloaked anyway. The only ones that are brought into our atmosphere that you're going to be able to see are the smaller craft, or scout craft. These are the ones that leave the larger motherships and come down to Earth. <clears throat> The majority of those on board the craft don't want to enter our atmosphere because of the frequency and vibration is too hard on their body. So when they have to come down, they will always be seen in the smaller craft, and you will usually see what is known as the little grays. And the little grays, to me, they're very charming, beautiful people. They are so cute. Because uh, they are not um, real people of people. <laughs> what I mean is not people anyway. But they're um, biologically created robots. We think of a robot as being mechanical. But these are biologically created beings to do the work. <laughs> and, you know, eventually, whenever we get to the stage, we can do that. We're already making a lot of experimentations with robotics. We will make a little being that looks just like us. <laughs> they are modeled after the larger grays, the tall grays that are almost seven foot tall, who are on board the mother craft. And they can, they're the ones that work in the laboratories on board the mother craft, and they do all kinds of work up there. But the Vibrations and frequencies of Earth are too hard on the body. So that's why they send the little guys down. They have been designed and created to take, be able to handle the density. Because this is the densest, uh, most difficult planet in the universe to live on. It's the densest. It's the heaviest. It's as low as you can go. You can't go any lower than Earth as far as vibrations and frequencies are concerned. But these little guys are created to withstand that. They can take the pressure of it on their body, of the frequencies and the vibrations. And I call them the gophers. They're like the uh, interns in the hospital. Uh, they do their job, and then th they go back. So those are the ones that are usually seen uh, in somebody's room or they're seen accompanying somebody uh, when they go on board the craft to have the experiments and the adjustments done to their body, the energy adjustments and the physical adjustments, they're usually taken by the little grays because that's their job. Now, uh, I'm trying to do this in order, so I won't. I'm probably even going to forget some things anyway. But um, some people talk about seeing tall blondes in their room at the different race altogether. 
But those are not real um, solid beings because they can't handle the density and the pressure of the vibrations of Earth. When they talk about seeing a, the blonde ones, the tall ones in their room, those are holograms. They are projected from the mothership to appear in the room, and they can communicate with the people, but they're not solid, <clears throat> not like the little guys. And of course, the little guys, they all have the ability to go through solid matter. They can break down the molecular structure of the walls and the ceilings as they take the person on board the ships for the examinations that have to be done. <clears throat> Now, um, that's what I said last week, too. Whenever you're, you see a UFO in the sky and all of a sudden it just bleeps out, that means that it has changed the frequency of vibration and has sped it up to where it suddenly goes into the other dimension. Just like Star Trek, it's engaged and they're there. <clears throat> when the vibration and frequency speed up, they become invisible to the person watching them. The same thing happens whenever you're looking at the sky and all of a sudden this light comes out of nowhere and there it is in the sky because they are entering our atmosphere. They have lowered the frequency and vibration of the craft to where it can enter into our atmosphere. <clears throat> but... They prefer to work on the person when they're in their bed at night, when they're making adjustments, adjusting the energy fields, and, and making the physical corrections that are needed to keep the body healthy. But if they can't do it in the bed, then they are taken on board the mother craft where the laboratories are. There's lots of machines there. The machines are what they're doing the work with. <clears throat> I've had many people, even now, are still emailing me and sending me pictures of marks that are on their body. <clears throat> uh, little indentations are things that seem to be a pattern of dots or lines, usually in triangles. I get lots of these. People send them to me. Of course, they don't hurt the person, and they fade away in a, in a few days or so. And they want to know, what is this? <laughs> All it is is a machine, because they said when they go to the larger craft, sometimes they have to use machines on the person for the adjustments to their energy field or the adjustments to their physical body. They do upgrades, and they do a lot of upgrades at night. All they're doing is taking care of us. <laughs> but when they do that, they have to use certain types of machines. And they said, these will leave marks on the body, but not to worry about it because it causes no harm and it fades away in a few days. But the person cannot remain in that density of the craft. Their human bodies can't handle it. <clears throat> the same thing as when the little guys come down, they're the only ones that can handle our density. <clears throat> But if you go on board the craft, your density has to be raised. Your vibration and frequency has to be raised. You can exist on board that craft for a short period of time. You can't stay there very long. And they will do that just long enough to do what they have to do and then bring you back. Otherwise, uh, it's too hard on the physical body, and they don't want to harm the physical body. <clears throat> I've had people come in, and my clients, and they'll say, well, I wake up in the morning, and I've got all these bruises all over my body, and I don't know, not all over, but certain parts of your body. got these bruises, and I don't know what's going on. Are the ETs taking me at night and beating me up? <laughs> I always have to laugh. The ETs get blamed for a lot of things that they don't have anything to do with. And believe me, they got a lot better things to do than to sit around trying to think how are we going to torment you, you poor little human. It's not done like that. <laughs> so when the person 
<clears throat> it's been on the craft, and I said the vibration of frequency is speeded up. They're bringing them back down to put them back into their bed and back into this heavy density. They said just the act of breathing can create bruises on the body as the whole cellular structure and everything adjusts to a heavier density frequency. Just the act of breathing can create these uh, bruises and marks on the physical body. And I think those are things that are important for the person to know about because they think awful things are being done until the simple explanation is given. And the bruises do fade away very quickly. This is why they won't keep the person on board the craft very long because they don't want to have lasting effects to the body. I have other people that do we get tons of emails and snail mail. And then at my conferences, and they all say the same thing. A lot, sometimes talk about <clears throat> when they're sleeping at night, and right before they wake up, all of a sudden they feel like they're paralyzed and they can't move. And it's very frightening for a few minutes until they are finally able to move the body. And I had one who went to the doctor. And they did a lot of testing, and I think they spent about $7,000 on sleep tests on this person to find out what was going on. Why did they wake up with this paralyzed feeling? Well, there's two reasons, and the one is so simple. But then, you know, doctors are not into metaphysics. They don't know the answer to these things. It would be a whole lot easier. But in the case of the ETs, well, I guess it goes along with both ways when you're taken out of your body. Now, what people probably don't realize is every night when you go to sleep, you go out of your body. Everybody does. It's no special thing. As soon as you go to sleep, you're out of there. But the body is what needs rest. It's what needs to go to sleep. The real you, the soul, the spirit, never gets tired. It doesn't need to sleep. Can you imagine how bored it would be sitting around waiting for you to wake up so it can get on with what it wants to do. So it's not going to sit around and wait. As soon as the body goes to sleep, the real you is out of there. <laughs> Some people can remember going out of the body. They go up to the ceiling and look down at their body, but then the minute they do that, they're back in the body. But you're all, all night long having all kinds of adventures. Everybody is. You're flying all over the world to all kinds of countries. You're having all kinds of adventures and seeing all kinds of things. You're traveling back and forth to the spirit side to get instruction from your um masters and the elders over there and the guides, or you may be traveling out to other planets or other dimensions, especially if you have come originally from these other planets, you go back at night and visit those places, then you come back in the next morning. But you don't normally remember going out of the body unless you have dreams of flying are dreams of being in an unusual, strange places. That's the only time you may have memories. Otherwise, you're just you're, the body is being entertained with dreams all night. This is the subconscious way of entertaining you and trying to give you messages while you're sleeping. But the real you is off doing all kinds of wonderful things. Now, it comes to be a certain time but in the morning, you're going to have to wake up. You know, you are always attached to your body by the silver cord, like an umbilical. The real you, the spirit, is attached to the body by this umbilical, and it's there called the silver cord. <coughs> it is it's there your entire life, it is not severed until you die. 
when you leave the body for the last time and go to the spirit side, then you go through a huge energy field that severs the silver cord. But until that time, you are always connected with your soul to the spirit, to the body. You can't get lost that way. So at a certain time in the morning, when it's time for you to wake up, it's almost as though you are reeled in and you're brought back into your body. But you can imagine what happens. Most of the time, it's a smooth transition. You gradually come back in, and you're waking up slowly. And it's a normal way of coming back to this world and adjusting to life here again. But if you were not, you were brought back too quickly. Suppose you were coming back in, and all of a sudden, maybe there was a loud noise in the room or in the house, and it made you jerk awake before you were all the way back into the body and all the connections, the brain, mind, body connections were not all hooked up again yet. If that happened, you would experience momentarily paralysis because the, the connections are not not all hooked up yet in the body is unable to move at that point. That's not supposed to happen because usually it's supposed to be a very smooth transition. But I've had some people that were terrified. They said, um, why was I paralyzed? They think the ETs are doing this to them. But it's a natural transition from the -the out-of-the-body state back into the normal uh, living state with the body. So if it's done too quickly, too abruptly, it causes temporary paralysis. But all the cases I've investigated, it passes quickly, just a minute or two. Naturally, they're scared because they can't move. But it will pass very quickly, and life will go on the way it should be. But you got to remember, this is a normal, natural thing that happens to you every night when you go to bed and go to sleep that you're out having all kinds of adventures, doing all kinds of wonderful, strange things out there, meeting with all of your guides, your guardians, the ETs. You're uh, having wonderful experiences that you don't remember. Some people say, I want to remember. Well, (laughs) I can't tell you what to do about that unless you meditate on it and say, I would like to remember some of these journeys. But there's so much about the human being and human life that we don't know, that we don't realize what's happening. The conscious mind is the last part to understand what's really going on out there. I call the conscious mind Mr. Stupid. My daughter Julia hates me to use that word stupid. But it's the part that thinks it knows everything but yet it doesn't know anything. And this just gives you some examples of what goes on that it thinks it's, it's all know about all this. Oh, yeah, you know, I understand my life. And it doesn't understand not even a smidget, a little bit of what's really going on in our lives and in the whole cosmos and everything. That's why I love this work so much because I'm always hunting and searching for new information, and uh, there's so much out there. And every time I think I know it all, I get some more information. And it is mind-blowing. But after a while, with working with it, it becomes very natural. Like, well, certainly this all makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Why shouldn't it? <laughs> Another thing people have trouble understanding is that You are not just this one body that you're living in right here. You are many, many pieces of yourself. They're all existing and having lives at the same time. That's what's called simultaneous time. And when I first got that, when I was working with the Nostradamus material 30 years ago in the 1980s, I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Now, it comes up so much that I'm very familiar with it. But it's like you are not just one person, one 
you know, piece of you, one part living in this body. That's just one tiny piece of you. They said your whole soul is so huge and so big, and when it comes into a body, it sends one little fragment into that body. But it's like it's, they compared it to a diamond with all the facets. And they, they call it shards and pieces that split off from this because it doesn't want to take the time to have one life at a time and have those adventures. It wants to be able to experience as much as it can all at one time. So what it does, it divides and sends all these pieces and shards and facets into many bodies. So it can all experience all of your adventures at the same time, which means we are living all of our past lives, this present life, and our lives in the present in all the other dimensions and possibilities, and all of our future possibilities are all being lived at the same time, which is very hard for us to understand. I said a while ago, we don't even know a smidget or a little piece of what's really going on here. And if you can imagine, you think this is all there is, it's not that way at all. You are composed of many, many thousands of pieces all existing at the same time. And they call this simultaneous time. This is really why we can access past lives, because they're all being lived at the same time. And I asked them one time, I don't understand this. How, you know you're a baby, you grow to a child, you grow to a teenager, then you grow to an adult. How can all of this be happening at the same time? They said that's because uh, you're not using the right terminology. That's why you don't understand it. It is not happening at the same time. It's existing at the same time. Now, I don't know if that makes it any easier to understand or not, because it's all so complex. But they said, you don't have to worry about it because you're focused on this life, what you're doing right now, and what you're accomplishing right now. Not to worry about the past. All your past lives, they are already over with. Don't worry about your childhood. All the things that happened to you were all part of your growth, all part of your lessons and your experiences. Focus on now, what you're accomplishing right now, and moving into the future. That's what they want you to do. <laughs> because the mind can't handle some of these things. It just does not have the concepts. It is not meant to handle these things. Although I'm finding people are understanding more and more. Um, when I go to the lectures now, there's a lot of young people. I've noticed that in the last 10 years, especially in even the last five years. A lot of young people, and they're asking very complex questions. They're getting it from my convoluted universe book. But it's questions that have never been asked before. So that tells me they're ready. They're there. And they can understand these concepts. So I have to try to think, okay, can I answer them and still not go too far over the heads of the other people in the audience? Because I've got to speak to everybody. I call this the Internet generation because they seem to be able to get it. And I've noticed it a lot. In London, I had a conference there I spoke at. And they're asking these convoluted universe questions. These things I talk about, they get it. They understand it. But they still said some of these things you're not supposed to dwell on because the human mind does not have the concepts to understand it. They said it's not, the, how do they say it? It's not the brain, it's the mind. I've had, I had one woman come in that said she knew she was living another life at the same time she's living this one. It was a life in New York, and she said from time to time she would kind of peek in on that other life 
and it was a woman that had children, and she had a different job. And she would peek in on her every once in a while, but she said, it's not me. It's a different husband, different children. I don't even look the same, but yet I know it's me. This is what I meant about other dimensions. So when I asked them what this was all about, they said, yes, it is another life, a parallel life that's going on at the same time as this one, but she's not to dwell on it, not to try to find out about it, Definitely not go there and try to find this person, because that person, even though it's her, is living a life it's supposed to live, has no knowledge of metaphysics, no knowledge of all these complicated things, that that person is going its own way. So to leave it alone, and not to try to interfere, not try to find that person, but have the knowledge is okay, but just don't dwell on it. You can really get your mind twisted around. I say, like my books, I say they're for people who want their minds spent like pretzel. <laughs> so we don't want to dwell on things that are better left alone just for knowledge. In my books, I said, that's all I can do. I get the knowledge, the information, I write about it, then I let it go. Because if you dwell on it, the mind can't handle it. And they've told me that many times. It's not the brain, it's the mind. It has no concept and no ability to have the concepts to understand what it's really all about. Many times when they're talking to me, they say, I can't find the words to express what I want to say. Uh, it's about time for me to sign off. Uh, we have a caller on line two. Okay, but it's about time to sign off, isn't it? Yeah, you have a good six minutes. Okay, but otherwise I was winding down. Okay, uh, you have a, I have a call. Hi. Who's there, please? Hello? Hi, uh, this is uh, Kaylee. Uh, I have okay. a question for you. Um, I know it's going to be short here, but uh, I have a question about a higher being that I'm around that uh, I know is above um, angels, but I don't know the name, but I know what he looks like. Well, he doesn't really have a gender, but I say he, you know, he can switch back and forth. But I just have a question of what he may be. Um, He He's... I don't know how to explain it, but he's highly powerful, um, pretty up there, and he's part of what he calls a council. Yes, Do you have I've any idea what I'm I've saying? Been, I've written a lot about the council. You have? Uh-huh. My uh, mother reads about you, so <laughs> she thought <laughs> that you could probably like help with your, it. It sounds like it's your guide or guardian angel is what you're talking about. Well, I thought that too, off. but actually, but I thought that too. But uh, he uses a different name, and he doesn't say angel; he says something else. And mm-hmm. he tends to speak uh, Latin, and uh. I've actually gotten plenty of words in Latin, and I didn't. I, I've never studied Latin in, in my life, so he can. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. If I should say. He could also be one of these aspects of yourself that I'm talking about from a past life also that I was talking about. Maybe, but he seems you know, pretty physical. Yeah, that would be one who would know Latin. But see, everyone mm-hmm. has a guide or guardian angel that's assigned to you when you come into a life. And it will be yeah. there with you your whole entire lifetime. And some people... I have workshops where we teach them how to contact their guide and guardian angel, and they can get their name, and they can have contact with them if they need to. And it's good if you can have contact. Well, I, I know. Well, I know. I know. Well, we call them different names, but you know, he, yeah, he because just they don't really use it, But names. he, he has said that he's part of a council. Yeah, there are many councils. Which is. Yeah, and he says he's part of this, and he's highly powerful, and 
And, he, I mean, he's proven that over and over. I've gone on different mediums. They say that he's real and a, a different entity from myself. And, you know, I've, yeah. I've been a medium since I was a small child, and I, I've dealt with both spirits that are human and, and, and above and, and, and lower. So, but I, I don't mean, but I, you know, I just want to know what he might be if you have any clue other than angel because again he, okay john he, he is calls telling me you're going to have to sign up but you know we're coming down he'll pull the plug if i don't sign up but um yeah to me that's perfectly normal what you're talking about i've written about the councils there are many different ones on different levels that are over certain things so this is very good you're in touch with that that the one on there a lot of people never are able to have contact with them. Really? So that, that's, that's I, really apparently he may be a suffering, but, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but he calls himself a different... Are okay? You're just more aware of him than the average person. Okay, I'm going to have to sign <laughs> off because he's going to pull the plug. But don't worry about it. It is perfectly normal. You're just more aware than other people are. That's all. Okay, uh, well, we're going to have to sign off because it's come to the top of the hour pretty quick, and I was worried about having something to talk about. It went very fast. Okay, I'll be back next week, and Julie will be back from England, and we'll be talking again. And I want to thank everyone for listening tonight. And tomorrow, on oh, Sunday, will be uh, Mother's Day. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in and being with us tonight. Good night, everybody. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.